Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we're doing 9-2 on series and convergence. So we'll start with a quick definition of what we mean by series in the calc class. So an infinite series is just the sum of the terms of a sequence. So all the 9 one, 1 work we did, if we start adding those terms together, instead of a sequence, now we have a series. So, common notation for it, sum from, <coughs> excuse me, from n equals 1 to infinity a sub n, so this is your first term, plus your second term, plus your third term, plus dot dot dot, plus your a sub nth term, plus all the way to infinity. Uh, some handy notation, partial sums, s sub 1 is just your first term, s sub 2, first term, plus your second term. Uh, S sub 3, first term plus second term plus your third term. And our nth, A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus dot 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 plus A sub n. If the sums converge, the series will converge. Otherwise, the series will diverge. All right, so we'll look at a quick summation. We'll go from one to infinity of one over two to the n. And we'll look at what some of the terms of that may look like. So our first sum would be one over two to the first or just one half. Our second sum would be then one half plus one over two squared, half plus a fourth is three fourths. S sub 3, 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. This is a 2 cubed here. So that would be 7 eighths. Uh, sub 4, I don't know where I got that 5 from. S sub 4. S sub 1 plus S sub 2 plus S, or I'm sorry, A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus A sub 3. Uh, in other words, we can just take the previous sum and add A4. So 7 A's plus 1 16th. So 14 16 plus 1 16 15 16 and so on. Now to see if the nth term will converge. If it does, this series will converge. So s sub n, 2 to the n minus 1, over 2 to the n. Oh, my apologies, that should be a big minus one, not a little minus one. Now let's take the limit of this. Let's do the limit as n approaches infinity, 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. 
Well, we can multiply by 1 as 1 over 2 to the n over 1 over 2 to the n. So we change the look, but not the value. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n over 2 to the n over 2 to the n. So that is then 1 minus 0 over 1, which is 1. So since this converges, we say this converges to Next, we'll look at the nth partial sum. This next one is going to be what's called a telescoping series. So 1 over n plus 5 minus 1 over n plus 6. So we'll look at just the first few terms of this, and it'll be apparent pretty quickly why we call it a telescoping. So if n is 1, we have 1 6 minus 1 7. If n is 2, we have then 1 7 minus 1 8. If n is 3, we then have 1 over 3 and 5 8 minus 1 over 3 and 6 9. Now as you can see, Minus one seventh plus one seventh, those will drop. Minus one eighth plus one eighth, those collapse. Minus one ninth plus one ninth, those will collapse. Everything but the very la first and last will basically drop out. So the nth term here would be just the generic one over n plus five minus one over n plus six. The n minus first term, so in other words, the term previous to that one, 1 over n plus 4 minus 1 over n plus 5. S sub n, the sum of the first n terms, we we'll then have, let's see, where are we? The nth term, so 1, 6 minus 1 over n plus 6. So our first term always stays, and then the last one doesn't have a partner, so that minus 1 over n plus 6 will still stay. So that's where these two guys are coming from. So again, the first term minus the last one left without a partner on the end there. So then let's look a uh, look at the limit of that nth term. Limit as n goes to infinity. S sub n. Well, that would be 1 6 minus 1 6 to 0. My apologies, as n goes to infinity, 1 divided by infinity is 0, making this a 1 6. Apologies there for the little mix up there. So, numerators holding still, denominators growing without bounds, that guy's dropping to 0. So, we're heading to a 1 6. So, s of n goes to 1 6. This is a convergent series. And again, this is when we have all of these several terms and we can sort of collapse them, picture uh, the old collapsible telescopes. That's where they get the name telescoping series. All right, so look at another quick series. Go from i equals 1 to infinity of 3. 
Well, this is just 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus dot dot dot. So S sub n here would be 3n. Yes, n goes to infinity. This goes to infinity as well. So since S of n diverges, we know also then that the series diverges. So next we'll look at another series. We'll get to telescoping form. So I'll go with the sum um, i equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 9n plus 20. So a sub n here. I'll go with the factor version 1 over n plus 4 by n plus 5. On this one, we can use partial fractions. Some of you are pretty comfortable with partial fractions. If you aren't, now's your opportunity to get a little more exercise in that. Uh, so we're gonna use our let line, let one over n plus four by n plus five equal a over n plus 4 plus b over n plus 5. Multiply both sides by the LCD, that'll clear a fraction out, and 1 is worth a by n plus 5 plus b by n plus 4. Then we'll let n equal negative 4, that'll drop the b out, so 1 is worth a times 1, so a is 1. Then we'll let a I'm sorry, n equal negative 5. So 1 is worth a times 0 is 0. b times negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So b is negative 1. So now we can say that a sub n is 1 over n plus 4 minus 1 over n plus 5. So S sub n, the fifth minus the sixth, so n equals one, plus n equals two, one sixth minus one seventh, plus n equals three, one seventh minus one eighth, plus et cetera, et cetera, plus our generic nth term, one over n plus four, minus one over n plus five. So minus one six plus a six drop, minus one seven plus a seventh will drop, minus one eighth plus an eighth will drop, etc. And this one over n plus four would have dropped with the minus one over n plus four in the previous term. So the only stuff that survives our cancellation in this telescope idea, S sub n is going to end up as one fifth minus one over n plus five. So then sum from n is 1 to infinity. I believe I accidentally used an i previously. Uh, that should have been an n. My apologies. Of 1 over n squared plus 9n plus 20 is the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of the fifth minus 1 over n plus 5. Well, as n goes to infinity, 1 over infinity plus 5, that'll drop to 0, so we get to 1 fifth. So this converges. It converges to a sum of 1 fifth. So that is another example from our telescoping. So here's the 1 over n plus 4 minus 1 over n plus 5. It may have been a little too far over. Next type of series we look at is a geometric series. 
So the idea here is we have some common ratio, some common number that we keep multiplying by. Uh, this time we'll start at zero and go to infinity. So we have a, r to the zero is just a one, so that's why we have a, a just by itself. If n is one, a times r to the first, or just a r. If n is or 2, a plus r squared, and so on, times r squared plus a times r cubed plus dot 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 plus a times r to the n plus dot dot dot. a here we're assuming is non-zero, otherwise we have a very boring series of a bunch of zeros. So R is, as I mentioned, the ratio, the common ratio. A is the initial term. So what, what we started with. All right, so we're going to sort of derive how we find the sum of a geometric series. Uh, we'll start with finding s sub n. So again, that's a plus a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed plus dot 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 plus a r and minus one. r s sub n multiply each of these guys by r. Well, a times r will give us a r. r times a r is a r squared. R, a, r times a r squared is a r cubed, and so on. Okay, now we can do uh, a little bit of work with these two sums. Specifically, the most useful thing we can do is find the difference between them. Uh, and you can do it either way. Let's, we'll do it this way. I'm used to doing it the other way. I think your author keeps it this way. Stick closer to what your author does. Uh, we'll take s sub n minus r s sub n. So a minus 0 is still a. a times r minus a sub r drops out. a r squared minus a r squared drops. a r cubed minus a r cubed drops out. a r to the n minus 1 minus a r to the n minus 1 drops. 0 minus a r to the n is minus a r to the n. And one thing I can do then is I can do a little factoring on each side of this. I'll factor an s sub n here and I have s sub n by one minus r is worth a by one minus r to the n power. What this allows me to do is get the sum by itself and that's the idea. We're looking for what the sum will go to. So s sub n a by one minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Now if we meet certain criteria, if r is in the open interval 0, 1, this is a proper fraction. If you take a proper fraction and start raising it to high, higher and higher powers, in other words, let n go to infinity on the r to the n. Proper fraction to a higher and higher power. Think of a half. Half squared is a fourth. We got a little smaller. Half cubed is an eighth. We got a little smaller. And really, any proper fraction on this 
zero one interval is going to happen r to the n will go to zero as long as we're on this interval so as long as we're on that interval then s of n is equal to a times 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r or simply a over 1 minus r again we have to be on this interval for that sum to hold or absolute value of r greater than 1 series will diverge. So for example, sum of n equals 1 to infinity, 2 to the n, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus dot 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 plus 2 to the n plus dot dot dot. That will diverge. It's going to just keep growing without bounds. We're not approaching one constant. But if we have something like sum of n equals 0 to infinity of 7 over 6 to the n, that's the same as 7 times the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 sixth to the n, since 1 to the n will still just kick back a 1 every time, and 6 to the n downstairs fits with that pattern before. Well, then R is on that magic window between 0 and 1. So our nth term, so R here is 1, 6. The absolute value of R is on that lovely interval. So we know that we can follow the sum. Our sum then would be A over 1 minus R. So our first term, zero power, anything other than zero to the zero power is one. One times seven is seven, so a here is seven. Seven over one minus a six. So seven over five six is 42 fifths. So as we add more and more of those together, uh, we would get closer and closer to having a sum of 42 over 5. Uh, we can also use a geometric series to prove that 0 0.9 repeating is exactly equal to 1. Not that it's close to, it's exactly equal to 1. Well, 0 0.9 with the bar, that means I have 9 tenths plus nine hundredths, plus nine one thousandth, plus etc. forever. So this is the sum, n equals zero to infinity of nine tenths times one tenth to the n. So take a second and make sure that you're following that this does match what, with what we said there. If we let n equal 0, 1 tenth to the 0 is 1, 1 times 9 tenth is 9 tenth. And that's our first add end. If n is 1, 1 tenth to the 1 is 1 tenth, 9 tenths times 1 tenth is 9 one hundredths. That's our second add end, and so on. So it does fit with the pattern. So here a is 9 tenths, r is 1 tenth. So A is on that magic interval, or I'm sorry, R is on that magic interval. So then our sum would be 9 tenths over 1 minus R of 1 tenth. 9 tenths over 9 tenths is indeed a 1. So that's a proof uh, using our new tools. If you're ever looking to explain that to someone that hasn't taken Calc 2, um, there is a way to show them without needing uh, the summation for your proof. Um, 
you can just let the nine tenths repeating forever equal um, and just pick some variable n and then ask them what 10 times n would represent. Well, if the nines are going on forever, we would just move that decimal one slot and we have nine, the nines going on forever. And if we just do the bottom minus the top, we get just a nine on the left side and we get nine n on the right and n is exactly equal to one. So that's a, a sort of more relatable proof. This is a proof that lets us practice some of our new skills uh, with series. Though. So let me look at a few properties of our infinite series. So we're going to let summation of a sub n, summation of b sub n both converge. And we'll define them to be cap A and cap B, respectively. And we're going to let C be some element of the real numbers. So one property we have, summation of from n equals 1 to infinity of c times a sub n so we're c a so on that one just picture c times a sub 1 plus c times a sub 2 plus c times a sub 3 etc etc just pull the common factor and it's the same as finding this and then multiplying by c uh, 2 and 3 We'll just do the plus or minus thing to cover both. Your author, I think, split them. A sub n plus or minus b sub n is a plus or minus b. So as long as a sub n and b sub n both converge, their sum or difference will converge to uh, the sum or difference of their limits. another theorem we get to play with. So this limit of the nth term of a convergent series states that if the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a sub n converges, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n would have to equal zero. So if we know this uh, series converges, then eventually that means the terms had to be heading towards zero. Uh, proof of that this is a nice, quick, painless proof. Let sum from 1 to infinity of a sub n equal some limit L. Then s sub n is worth the previous sum plus the nth term. So previous sum plus the nth Well, if these are both converging to L, then L is L plus A sub n, A sub n must be getting close to zero.
if this doesn't go to zero, then we have a divergent series. This is referred to as the nth term test for divergence. Very handy little tool. So for example, sum from zero to infinity of seven to the n. So if I want to show that this diverges, I can just do the nth term test. So I'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of seven to the n. Since that's infinity, therefore the series diverges. Take a look at one that starts at 1, 7 times n factorial over 11 times n factorial plus 24. So this one would get very messy very quickly without this test. If I want to know if it converges or diverges, I just take the limit as n goes to infinity of the generic nth term of this. So that would be limit n goes to infinity 7 times n factorial over 11 times n factorial plus 24. Uh, you hopefully sort of guessed that we were going to use a multiplication by 1 here in the form of 1 over n factorial over 1 over n factorial. So now we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 7 n factorial over n factorial over 11 n factorial over n factorial plus 24 over n factorial. So then this is 7 plus 11 uh, plus and 24 over n factorial will very quickly head to zero. Remember n factorial grows very, very quickly. That will drop to zero very quickly. So this goes to 7 elevenths at for our limit. Since that is non-zero, our nth term doesn't go to zero. I know that the series diverges. have the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. If I try that test, limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, well that is equal to 0. That tells me all, only that the nth term test does not apply. So it doesn't guarantee that it converges or diverges. All we can say for sure is that the test does not apply in this case. Uh, the theorem stated that if we got a non-zero result that it diverges, it didn't necessarily guarantee that if the limit was zero, that it uh, would uh, be able to tell us converges or diverges. Test simply doesn't apply. All right, uh, so the uh, last one we want to look at is the famous bouncing ball problem. So we're going to take a ball, and we dropped it from, oh, let's say five feet. And each bounce is a third the height of the previous bounce. And we're going to find the total vertical distance traveled by the ball. Uh, 
not so cleverly, I'm just going to use D for drop. So drop number one, let it go, boom, falls five feet, smacks it to the ground. 